I've never been much of a believer in the supernatural. Ghosts, demons, and things that go bump in the night were just stories to scare kids around the campfire. That all changed when I moved into the old Victorian house on Elm Street. Little did I know, the shadows that clung to its walls held secrets darker than any campfire tale. It all started innocently enough. The creaky wooden floors, the flickering lights, the distant howls of the wind outside, things I could easily dismiss. But then came the whispers. Soft, barely audible, like the rustle of leaves in the wind. At first, I thought it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. Late nights and an overactive mind, I told myself. One night, as I lay in bed, the whispers grew more distinct. I couldn't make out the words, but the urgency in the hushed tones sent shivers down my spine. It was as if the house itself was trying to tell me something, something important. I tried to ignore it, burying my head under the pillow, but the whispers persisted. Days turned into sleepless nights. I became a prisoner in my own home, haunted by the relentless murmurings that echoed through the halls. Desperate for answers, I began to research the history of the house. That's when I stumbled upon a crime file from decades ago, a grim tale that seemed to resonate with the shadows that enveloped my life. The old records spoke of a family that once called the Victorian house their home. A seemingly ordinary family until one fateful night when a series of gruesome crimes unfolded within those very walls. A shiver ran down my spine as I read about the unspeakable horrors that stained the rooms, and I couldn't shake the feeling that the whispers were the echoes of the past, reaching out to me. Determined to unravel the mystery, I delved deeper into the crime files. The victims' names, the chilling details of the crime scene, it was all there, meticulously documented. I couldn't escape the conclusion that the lingering spirits sought justice, urging me to uncover the truth that had remained buried for so long. As I continued my investigation, strange occurrences became a daily ordeal. Objects moved on their own, doors slammed shut without a breeze, and chilling apparitions appeared in the corners of my vision. The boundary between the living and the dead blurred, and I found myself caught in a sinister dance with forces beyond my comprehension. The whispers guided me through hidden passages within the house, revealing long-forgotten secrets. It became clear that the malevolence that plagued the Victorian house was far from ordinary. It was a tale of betrayal, revenge, and unfinished business, all woven into the fabric of the haunted dwelling. In the end, the shadows unveiled their truth, and I became the reluctant keeper of a story that transcended time. The whispers subsided replaced by an eerie calm. The once tormented spirits found solace, and the house that held their dark secrets stood silent, as if acknowledging the resolution of a long-standing feud. As I moved away from Elm Street, the echoes of that grim tale lingered in my memory. I may have started as a skeptic, but the whispers in the shadows left an indelible mark on my soul, forever transforming me into a reluctant believer in the supernatural. Moving into Harrow House was supposed to be a fresh start, a chance to leave behind the hustle of the city and embrace a quieter life. Little did I know that the aging mansion harbored a chilling past that would soon intertwine with my own. From the moment I set foot in Harrow House, an unsettling feeling settled in the pit of my stomach. The air hung heavy with an unspoken sorrow, and the grandeur of the architecture couldn't mask the shadows that clung to every corner. As the new owner, I was determined to turn it into a home, dismissing the rumors of its haunted history as mere gossip. The first signs that something was amiss came during the renovation process. Muffled footsteps echoed in empty hallways, and the temperature would inexplicably drop, sending a shiver down my spine. I tried to explain it away, drafts, old plumbing, and overactive imagination, but deep down, I knew there was more to it. One evening, 
as I sat alone in the dimly lit library, the atmosphere grew thick with an otherworldly presence. The flickering flames in the fireplace cast dancing shadows on the walls, and I could almost feel unseen eyes watching me. That's when the old piano in the corner began to play a haunting melody, its keys moving as if guided by an invisible hand. Fear gripped me, but curiosity propelled me forward. I approached the piano, and the music ceased as abruptly as it had begun. The room fell silent, and I hesitated, contemplating whether to flee or confront the inexplicable. It was then that a cold breeze whispered through the room, carrying with it a name, Eleanor. Intrigued and unnerved, I delved into the history of Harrow House. The dusty archives revealed tales of a woman named Eleanor Harrow, who had lived there in the late 19th century. Rumors circulated about her tragic demise, but the details remained elusive. The more I uncovered, the more it seemed that Eleanor's spirit lingered, trapped within the walls of her former home. Night after night, the manifestations escalated. Doors creaked open on their own, and ethereal apparitions glided through the corridors. The once elegant halls became a stage for the spectral drama that unfolded with each passing hour. It became clear that Eleanor yearned for something, a resolution that had eluded her in life. Driven by empathy, I sought a way to communicate with Eleanor's restless spirit. Late one evening, I lit candles in the grand ballroom and a soft voice filled the air, revealing the tragic story of a love lost and a betrayal that echoed through the ages. Eleanor's unfulfilled desires bound her to Harrow House, and she pleaded for help in finding peace. In a selfless act, I dedicated myself to assisting Eleanor in crossing over. Through rituals and conversations that transcended the physical and spiritual realms, I became a conduit for her longing soul. As the last echoes of her story reverberated through the house, a profound stillness settled in, and the weight that had burdened Harrow House lifted. In the end, Eleanor's spirit found solace, and the once haunted mansion transformed into a haven of tranquility. The echoes of her tale, though, lingered in the air, a reminder that some stories refused to be forgotten, even in the silence of an old mansion that had witnessed both love and betrayal. And so, Harrow House became not just my home, but a keeper of secrets from a bygone era. Story 3 Life took a strange turn the day I stumbled upon an ancient leather-bound book in a dusty corner of the antique store. Little did I know that opening its weathered pages would unleash a series of events that would plunge me into a world where the line between reality and nightmare blurred, and the devil himself seemed to be keeping a meticulous ledger. The book, with its ominous title The Devil's Ledger, exuded an aura of malevolence. As I leafed through its brittle pages, I discovered a litany of names, each accompanied by a cryptic set of numbers. At first, I dismissed it as an elaborate hoax, a sinister prop for the macabre. However, as I continued reading, a chilling realization crept over me, the numbers corresponded to significant events in the lives of the listed individuals. Intrigued and apprehensive, I couldn't resist the urge to investigate further. The ledger seemed to possess an uncanny ability to predict the future. It foretold accidents, tragedies, and inexplicable misfortunes with an eerie accuracy that sent shivers down my spine. The more I dug into the names within its cursed pages, the darker the revelations became. As the mysterious events unfolded, I found myself entangled in a web of fate and the supernatural. The ledger seemed to wield a sinister influence, as if the devil himself was orchestrating a malevolent symphony with the lives of those ensnared in its pages. Fear gripped me, yet a morbid curiosity kept me turning the ancient parchment. Haunted by the realization that I held a key to the destinies of others, I grappled with the ethical dilemma of whether to intervene or let fate unfold. The ledger became an ominous burden, its dark secrets weighing heavily on my conscience. With each passing day, 
I felt the encroaching darkness, a palpable malevolence that clung to me like a sinister shadow. Desperation led me to seek guidance from a reclusive scholar well-versed in ancient occult practices. Together, we embarked on a journey to decipher the cryptic symbols and incantations within the ledger. It became evident that the book's origins were steeped in the occult, a forbidden tome that bridged the mortal realm and the infernal domain. As we delved deeper, a revelation struck, the ledger was a pact with the devil, a contract binding the souls of those named within its cursed pages. The numbers represented a sinister currency, a debt owed to the infernal realm. The only way to break the malevolent cycle was to confront the devil himself and negotiate for the release of the ensnared souls. In a chilling encounter, I faced the devil at the crossroads, the ancient ledger in hand. The negotiations were fraught with peril, but through a combination of cunning and desperate pleas, I managed to strike a deal. The infernal ledger vanished, and a haunting silence settled over the crossroads. As I walked away, I couldn't shake the feeling that the devil's ledger, with its dark secrets and malevolent influence, had left an indelible mark on my soul. The experience served as a chilling reminder that some bargains come with a price that transcends the earthly realm. The ledger was gone, but its echoes lingered, a testament to the thin veil that separates the mortal from the infernal. If you're hooked on the horrors of these stories, subscribe now for more spine-tingling content. Don't miss out on the supernatural journey, hit subscribe and join our community of thrill-seekers today.